Their animes most dearly departed. I'm Ashley with Watch Mojo, and these are the top 20 saddest deaths in anime. It feels nice. That's good. For this list, we'll be looking at the most heart wrenching death scenes across the whole medium, with each departure creating a new void within our otaku hearts. As always, you can catch me on Twitter at AshJBo, so head over there, give me a follow, and let me know which anime list you want to see next. Number 20, Chiaki. Danganronpa 3, The End of Hope's Peak High School. For all you gaming purists out there, just do yourself a favor, curl up into a ball, and pretend that what happened to best girl in this anime is non-canon. For the rest of you, you might as well do the same. Anything to prevent the imminent despair of knowing that despite her conviction and confidence in her friends, Jackie was still brutally killed at the murderous hands of Junko, who saw fit to throw her into a gauntlet of death, concluding with her getting impaled every which way. We need a new game plus stat. We, we had so much fun. Number 19, Okita, Gintama. It takes a lot for the likes of the Shinsen Gumi to break down into tears. After all, the majority of them are bumbling buffoons who only know how to slice up a fool when the time calls for it. Except in the case of Sugo's sister, who proved herself to be a radiant figure who not only brought out the best in her mischievous little brother, but also earned Hijikata's affection. <laughs> Throw in her love for all things spicy, and she was well on her way to becoming a top tier waifu, at least until she was crippled by illness, leaving her boys in black to wallow in grief. <laughs> <laughs> Number 18, Yukishiro Tomoe, Roroni Kenshin, Trust and Betrayal. Turns out the origins of the Manslayer's infamous scar is intrinsically tied to the life and death of a certain lady, one who won his heart while also plotting to end him. <laughs> After slaying her husband during an assassination mission, Kenshin found himself falling for the woman he had unknowingly turned into a widow. Things were made all the more awkward when Tomoe became just as infatuated with her former hubby's killer. Tomoe! As you can imagine, it all goes a bit pear shaped as the truths and murder plots are revealed, leading to Tomoe losing her life in the arms of the man she both adored and despised. <laughs> Number 17, Leomon, Digimon Tamers. Who says shows aimed at younger audiences can't deliver on the emotional punches? I don't know who you are, but I do know you're being used. Not only did Tamers excel when it came to mature scenes and nightmare fuel, but also didn't hold back when it came to traumatizing death scenes. Case in point, when the wrathful Bielzimon decided to slay Jerry's digital partner right in front of her via a front stab with his bare hand. <laughs> Not only is it horrifying on every level, but this moment would serve as the catalyst that would lead to all future terrors involving the D Reaper. Jeez, Leomon does not get a break in this old franchise. Be brave, Jerry. Part of me will always be with you. Remember, you have a lion's heart. <laughs> Number 16, Bernard Wiseman. Mobile Suit Gundam 0080, War in the Pocket. Throughout the 100 year war, the Principality of Xeon was always presented as the elitist space assholes who didn't care how many died for their cause. 
Then along came this little mini-series that explored the tried and true theme of how at the end of the day, there are good people on both sides. With the war itself being the true villain at the end of the day. Did you think of a good idea, Bernie? Mm-hmm. You bet I did. Nowhere was this more evident than with Bernie, a Xeon soldier with a good soul determined to complete his mission and destroy the Gundam prototype. Not only does he fail and lose his life in the process, but he's killed at the unknowing hands of the Federation soldier who he had fallen for. What about the Zaku pilot? Nothing left, sir. A pile of hamburger. Number 15, Shirley, Code Geass. With the Britannian Empire on one side and Zero's Rebellion on the other, it's easy to forget just how many innocents were caught in the middle of the conflict including the woman who could arguably be called Lelouch's first true love. Huh? It's no secret that you've always had a big crush on Lelouch. Oh, not you too, Coach Valletta! Naive yet charming, Shirley was infatuated with her enigmatic prince from day one, only for the ongoing war to rob her of everything, including her father and eventually her own life. I want to bring all the happiness back into Lulu's life! Then maybe he can be together with his sister, Nana! <gasps> Watching Lelouch hopelessly use the Gias to try and resurrect her is quite possibly his lowest point, and all of it was made possible by that shitlord Rolo. I'll keep falling in love with... <laughs> Number 14, Caesar Sapelli, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Kiruma kissing will you to you, Nara? Turns out there are only so many beautiful, beastly, blonde Italians allowed in a JoJo series at one time. And while Giorno would go on to shine, the same can't be said for Caesar, who tragically lost his life during a brutal brawl with the Pillar Man Wamu. And while he was able to leave the last of his Haman behind for Joseph, it wasn't enough to prevent his unceremonious crushing at the hand of a cross-shaped rock. Caesar! It's a very JoJo way to go out, but it was still saddening to see Joseph lose his bromance in such a horrendous manner. Arrivederci. Caesar! Number 13, Sakunosuke Oda, Bungo Stray Dogs. Hard to believe that the mischievous yet ultimately kind-hearted Dazai was once a ruthless enforcer for the Port Mafia. But as we learned in the flashback arc, he was bad to the bone, left tethered to whatever shred of humanity he had left thanks to his dear friend Oda Saku, a paragon of virtue despite his own gunslinging profession. Alas, following the death of the orphans in his care, Odasaku embarked on a self-destructive path of revenge, concluding with his own demise, but not before pleading with his friend to be a good man and leave the clutches of the Port Mafia. Needless to say, his words had a profound effect. <laughs> Number 12, Neji Hyuga, Naruto Shippuden. Going from prideful prodigy to capable comrade, Neji had certainly come far since the days of beating the crap out of his cousin during the Chunin exams. With the war against Madara continuing to escalate, countless shinobi lost their lives due to the Uchiha's top-tier jutsu, which happened to include a slew of giant splinters, some of which were aimed at Naruto and Hinata. In the ultimate display of devotion to his family, Neji chose to take the hit, losing his life soon after, but ensuring that the will of fire lived on. Number 11, Koro-sensei, Assassination Classroom. 
Hard to believe that watching a giant smiling yellow tentacle monster being stabbed would bring everyone to tears, but boy did it. Such a beautiful gift. I hope against hope I've been worthy of it. Following his battle with the new Reaper, Koro Sensei is left at his most vulnerable, allowing Class E to finally complete their mission and kill him. I thanked him with my knife. Of course, it's a tad difficult for Nagisa to land the final blow, on account of how the creature had become not only a great teacher, but also an integral figure in their lives, providing support and comfort when the world had shunned them. However, with some final words of encouragement, he's finally able to go through with it. Cue the waterworks. Number 10, Ushio Okazaki, Clannad Afterstory. Portraying the death of a child is never pleasant, though this sequel series decided to take it to the next level when it decided that it was time for this adorable bundle of innocence and joy to follow in the footsteps of her mother and jump off the mortal coil. Nikisa. Nikisa! Just as father and daughter were finally starting to bond in the wake of Nagisa's death, the younglings soon succumbed to the same disease, passing away in the snow, while all her father can do is cradle her and fall into a fresh pit of despair. Are we on the train yet? Yeah, we made it on the train. Come on, you were supposed to be a high school rom-com anime. Yushio! Number 9, Kamina, Guren Lagan. I'll repay that. I'll repay that ten times over. Mark my words. With his hatred for shirts, phenomenal speeches, and manliness that surpasses the heavens, Kamina made one of the strongest introductions in all of modern anime, which is why his sudden death so early on in the series came as such a shock. Later, buddy. Huh? What was that, bro? Sure, this would give way for Simon to rise up as the true protagonist, but having to say goodbye to such a mad lad moments after he had declared his love for Yoko and was set to lead humanity into a new age of rebellion, yeah, we're still not over it. That day, we lost something that could never be replaced. Number 8, Sir Night Eye, My Hero Academia. The mission to save Eri and defeat Overhaul may have ended in success but there were still monumental casualties on the hero's side. <laughs> Namely, All Might's former sidekick, whose wounds proved so grievous, not even he could escape his doomed future. <laughs> what makes his passing all the more of a tearjerker is his final words to Mirio, using his quirk one last time to see into yet another future, content with the knowledge his protege would go on to become a shining hero despite losing his powers, just as long as he keeps on smiling. Number 7, Tors, Vinland Saga. While war and glory had once dominated his life as a Viking commander, ever since becoming a parent, Tors had remade himself into the pinnacle of goodwill and humbleness, wanting nothing more than to protect his family and spare them from the chains of violence. Alas, his own virtues proved to be his undoing. After Ashlad and his crew broke the rules of engagement and took Torfin hostage, forcing the true warrior to submit. And yet, despite being pelted with arrows, Tors not only still had the strength to die standing, but also inspire respect in someone as embittered as Ashlad. And just like that, one of the few morally decent men in the series passed on to Valhalla. <laughs> Number 6, Maze Hughes, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. The only character we'd risk human transmutation to bring back Mace Hughes' sudden murder cast a huge shadow on this legendary series. 
with his incorruptible heart and compassionate nature sorely missed. Hi, princess! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Daddy, your beard is itchy! His utter devotion to his family and endearing friendship with Roy Mustang often proving the sole bright spot as the darkness of the homunculi continued to consume the land. And then Envy shapeshifted into his wife, caused him to drop his guard, and shot him dead. You look surprised. What the hell are you? At the very least, he was avenged in the most phenomenal manner possible. Gracia, I'm so sorry. Alicia. Remember, Daddy loves you. Number 5. Cowrie. Your Lie in April. Because why just have a beautiful happily ever after romance laced together by the joy of music when you could have a tragedy that not only destroys both the main character and the audience, but also paves the way to an ending sequence that's utterly breathtaking. Like hell would I ever leave you alone. Reach her. Reach her. I'm putting my soul into this. As Kosei puts on the performance of his life, he witnesses what appears to be a spectre of Kauri playing alongside him. Which means that the worst has happened, she's died during her operation, and the girl he loved is now lost forever, with only the memory of her music and the lie she told in April to remember her by. <laughs> Number 4. L. Death Note. We all know the crux of what made this occult detective thriller such a gem was the battle of wits between the god of the new world and his ingenious oddball nemesis, with every move bringing them closer to either exposure or death. Come on, let's go, Light. It seems like it's all worked out. Despite coming within an inch of revealing Light's secrets and winning their little game, L tragically didn't live to see the fruits of his labors come to pass. All thanks to a rather insidious move by Kira when he used Rem's protective nature for Misa to his advantage, having her kill the detective in a move that almost put the mass murderer at checkmate. Everyone, the Shiniga. He may have reveled in the demise of his rival, but we sure didn't. What's going on? Ah! Calm down, mate. Number 3. Meaty. Made in Abyss. Think the death of a misshapen blob can't make you cry? Well, you'd be dead wrong. Starting off as a creepy yet ultimately harmless creature that lives with the infinitely fluffier Nanachi, we soon learn that Meaty used to be a bubbly orphan just looking for a better life. Until she was tricked by Bondrude into taking part in his experiments, got exposed to the curse of the Abyss, and was agonizingly transformed into her new hideous form. <laughs> Unable to be killed by any conventional means, it fell to Reg and his incinerator to finally end her suffering. We knew it was for the best, and yet we still can't stop weeping. <laughs> Number 2. Yuki, Sword Art Online 2. Who would have guessed that as soon as OP Lord Kirito left the building and let Asuna take the reins, it would give way to a truly bittersweet conclusion involving the death of her new bestie. While she was a bit of a beast in the virtual gaming sphere, back in the real world, Yuki was far from okay, not having much time left due to an incurable medical condition. For these last three months. We've all been stunned by how Yuki's managed to hang in there. However, instead of passing away in her clinical prison, Asuna and the rest of the players jacked her back into the game one last time so that they could all say goodbye together, along with one hell of a view. I gave this life everything I had. I was alive. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Ace. One Piece. This series has so many death scenes potent enough to break your heart in half 
that choosing one would normally be impossible. And yet, even compared to the likes of Merry, Whitebeard, and Corazon, the end of Ace still stands tall as the most tragic moments in this shonen juggernaut's history. <gasps> My after coming so far, overcoming so many enemies, and even achieving the impossible of rescuing his big brother from his scheduled execution, Luffy can only watch in horror as Ace stands in the way of an attack meant for him, giving his life so that his Straw Hat sibling can escape. And we're still not over it. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.